Hello my lovelies, welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Mary and I give you an extra warm welcome. I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button and stayed for a while. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you more than you know. All right, so we are here to talk about the new, um, I'm pretty sure it's a Valentine's Day launch from Pat McGrath. My guess is it's probably being launched next week on Thursday or Friday. I forget what days she does her launches. Yeah. And just Pat McGrath Beauty, Pat McGrath Labs makeup brand as a whole, because I feel like we all have a good amount of opinions about everything that has been launching in the past two years, I wanna say. That's why we are here. Stick around if you wanna hear my thoughts on Pat McGrath, the brand, and I guess where I'm going with the brand from here forward. Let's get started with this video. All right, my lovelies, I am going to pull out mostly Pat McGrath products. I figured this gives me a chance to just use my Pat McGrath items, which I do truly enjoy. But we're gonna start with her foundation and her concealer. I use light medium 13 for the foundation. Might be a tiny bit dark for me right now, but we will see. And a shade um, LM8 for the concealer. Face is already primed, road skin, that new Chanel primer, and the Danessa Myricks Balm powder. I'm gonna show you the video here of the new teaser. I mean, we already know what it is, but let me show you the new teaser of her newest launch. Like always, packaging does not reflect the actual makeup products. I don't know why she does that. To hype it up, maybe? I don't know. Makeup Forever Foundation Brush, um, but I feel like in the past, gosh, I wanna say maybe since Mothership number nine, Utopian Dream, I feel like the packaging just does not reflect what's inside, right? Let me know if you agree. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go into the concealer now. Okay, so now that you've seen the teaser, here's a picture of the collection. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, I did post on my community tab on YouTube and some of you uh, agree with what I said. I'm just tired of her teasing and what she's teasing doesn't even reflect at all what the actual collection is. I mean, here we see the packaging and we think, oh great, she's gonna give us some different colors. Kind of like with Mothership, what is it? Mothership number two. Is that the one that has the blue or is that Mothership number one? I think Mothership number two has the green and that's not what we got. <laughs> same old, same old, purple, pink, tone of brown and that champagne color that she includes in almost every single palette, which I know some people really appreciate, but we're at the point where like enough is enough. Like you're not giving us something different. With the way the makeup world is as far as collections and how big makeup collections are with pretty much close to the average consumer, it just doesn't make sense to keep giving us the same thing over and over, you know? Okay, here is what the skin is looking like. I did go in to the uh, Charlotte Tilbury contour wand for my contour and the Milani cream bronzer. She, Pat McGrath currently doesn't have any cream bronzer or contour, but we're gonna jump in to this Pat McGrath cream blush. Okay, so this launch, it has a quad, um, two lipsticks, and a highlighter. Yeah, I'm being, <laughs> trying to think what exactly it is that I wanna say because I feel like this is done for before and not just these products, but these colors. Two nude shades, one darker, well one, I feel like the darker maybe has a little bit of mauve undertone and then the other one is like a warm tone nude. And then the highlighter reminds me a lot of one of the highlighters that she launched. I think it was in the Bridgerton collection. The one that, I, do I have that? I think I have that highlighter. The one with a little um, baby angel and the heart, I think. So the same thing over and over. 
Also, I follow uh, her page on Facebook. I forget what it's called. I'll share it here. Every shade is a repeat shade. Nothing is new. So basically, this is just repackaged. And I'm talking about the quad. I don't know about the lipsticks. It's repackaged product that maybe is just sitting there. Or maybe she had other plans for it and is selling it as this new Valentine's collection. I'm gonna tell you right now, a lot of people are pretty disappointed. Um, I shared it on my Instagram stories and I shared it on the community tab here on YouTube and I have heard constantly that it's a total pass and they're very disappointed because they feel like this might be the fall of Pat McGrath as a brand. I would love to know if you agree or disagree with that. Okay, we're gonna set the under eyes now. I did already set them with MAC Fix Plus. Now I'm going to jump into the Pat McGrath powder, which is not my absolute favorite. For some reason, I did not fall in love with this powder like everybody else did. It just, it doesn't do an amazing job under my eyes. It just doesn't. Okay, so one of the things that I'm the most frustrated about for the last couple of launches from Pat McGrath. I feel like I would have uh, maybe more, like I wouldn't be as disappointed if say she would have used pink and purples for the packaging versus using blues and reds and kind of get people's hopes up that she's finally changing it up and giving us something other than brown, pink, gold, or purple. Although I feel she doesn't do purple too often. Yeah, so I myself, that's one of the things I'm a little frustrated with is the packaging does not reflect at all what we're actually getting. And I get it. I mean, more than likely, it's a marketing tactic. I understand, but as a consumer, I'm telling you, I'm frustrated about that. I think a couple of you are as well. I wish she would just stop doing that. I also hope that somebody from her team watches this, although I feel like this has been a constant battle with a lot of people who have not super amazing opinions about you know, what she's been doing lately. Also, I have heard that they do delete on their Instagram comments if it's something negative. Let me know if you have heard that too and if you think it's true or not. That's what I have heard through the grapevine. I don't know how true that is. <laughs> I'm using the medium for my T-zone. So yeah, so am I going to purchase anything from this collection? No, I am not. Am I disappointed? I am and mostly because I feel like we've been disappointed for almost two years now with what we've been getting and I don't want it to be over. I don't want for Pat McGrath as a brand to die down. Yeah. <laughs> I went into the Chanel loose powder for the rest of my face. My makeup is looking beautiful. Does Pat McGrath have good quality products? Yes, she does. That I cannot deny. Do I absolutely love the way that my eye looks come out when I use a Pat McGrath palette? Yes, I definitely do. But I do feel like the quality, especially with the Pat McGrath palettes, have kind of come down. But from the first Mothership until Mothership number seven, which is Divine Rose, I feel like all of the Astro Blitz shades are that special baked formula that everybody loves. I know I enjoy it. I enjoy that formula more than I enjoy the newer super glittery formulas that she's been putting in her palettes. I'm pretty sure Mothership number 11, we have absolutely zero of that baked special Astro Blitz shade formula. I'm gonna jump into her bronzer. This is in Bronze Dawn. I do enjoy this bronzer. It's an okay bronzer, but it's not my absolute favorite. Let me know down below if you agree that you feel as well that we are getting gypped just a tiny bit in the formula and in the pan sizes when it comes to her quads. I'm gonna see if I can find, I think I have an older version of one of her quads and a newer version and there's a difference in the pants. That's also another thing that I have noticed. The price has gone up and the pan sizes have gotten smaller. And I get it, inflation, I understand that. But at least if you're gonna bring the price up, then leave the pans as they are, right? 
I, feel, I just feel like it's not getting, it's not improving. We're not seeing formulas that are getting better and better like Natasha Denona. Instead, we're seeing the opposite and people are noticing and people are calling it out. And I don't know, I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm a worried about Pat McGrath the brand if it keeps going like this i don't know how much longer it's going yeah and then all the sales it kind of makes you wonder like why does she have so many sales all year long these are all questions that pop in my head when it comes to pat mcgrath and i would love to know if these are also things that pop in your head when it comes to her brand all right another thing i wanted to touch up on was when mothership number 11 was teased announced there was a video i watched um I'll see if I can find it and I'll share um, a picture here. In that video, the YouTube content creator mentioned that there was either a second or third party financing company that was involved with Pat McGrath. Hopefully I can do some research and find out exactly when that happened because if it happened around when Mothership number seven, Divine Rose was released or like a, a little bit after that, that could be why we keep seeing these changes because the possibility is that if there's second or third financing parties involved, that could possibly mean that she does not have 100% full creativity control and why we're seeing so many changes and the brand not reflecting Pat McGrath like we feel it used to three, four years from now. That's, that's my kids downstairs. Yeah, I... Maybe I need to do a deep dive, but I just feel like the brand is suffering. I feel like the brand is suffering. So if I feel that, then I feel like probably her customers are too, like non-YouTube customers. It makes me sad. It makes me sad because I just started dipping into the brand not too long ago. Mothership number seven, um, was it Divine Rose? No, Divine Rose 2 was my very first Pat McGrath purchase and I didn't even buy it like around launch time. I think it was um, the second, like after it sold out and then she restocked it. So it, it makes me just sad. <laughs> okay, before we talk a tiny bit more, um, I'm just gonna create a quick eye look. I did pull out two palettes. I pulled out the Star Wars one, the Divine Droid, and the reason I did is because that pink shade and that new release reminds me of this one in here. And look at that, pink and purple. Look at that. The three shades, the brown, is it the brown? Yeah, I think the, the matte brown, the pink, and the purple are in the jeweled temptation something like that from the bijou brilliance collection I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the five pan palette from the four that she released with that collection three of the shades you can find in that palette and the shimmery champagne is in the celestial odyssey palette so yeah i don't have the jeweled palette but like i said these two shades you know and then I did also pull out my Venusian Sunrise so I can jump into the mattes in here. But let me create an eye look really quick. I'll probably speak through this and then we'll continue with the rest of the conversation and kind of finish up this video. Sonia G Crease L. BK, Nikki LaRose, and 1-3. NYX Glitter Glue. Natasha Denona, Draw and Diffuse. All right, here is the look with these two Pat McGrath palettes. Divine Droid, right? Yep. And the Venusian Sunrise. Cute little look. I don't wear purple and pink together often, so enjoy. <laughs> And this is the highlighter that I was thinking. I think this is the one I was thinking when I saw 
the one from this new collection. It is the Skin Fetish Sublime Skin Highlighter in Lunar Nude. So, you know, definitely similar, just nothing new. Uh, I'm gonna use this Sonia G Worker L. And I did go in to a little sample of YSL mascara for that. And the Gucci Brow Pencil. Have not set my eyebrows yet because I usually put highlight first and then I set them. It's a pretty highlighter. I enjoy it. I don't pick it up enough. My favorite highlighter from Pat McGrath has always been Divine Rose. It's just a really good formula. It's like that baked formula. The tone, the undertone, the peachy undertone in it is just perfect for my skin tone. Out of all the highlighters I have tried from Pat McGrath, that is just my absolute favorite. Okay, so you are all probably wondering, well, why are you making this video? I'm making this video because I feel like I had a lot to say when it comes to Pat McGrath. I just have been a tiny bit disappointed, especially within the last year with the launches. And it just makes me sad because it's a brand that I enjoy. Do you see my makeup? It looks absolutely beautiful. She is a makeup artist. She obviously knows what she's doing. I just don't feel that Pat McGrath is being reflected in the makeup that she's releasing. And like I mentioned, it might be that second or third party financing that has to do with that, but... I just, I really wanted to get on camera, talk to you all about it, hear what you have to say about it, play with my Pat McGrath makeup because I do enjoy the way my makeup looks every time I pick up Pat McGrath products. Um, the eyeshadow palettes, I feel like something's going on. We are all seeing it, we are all noticing it, and it needs to be talked about. It really does need to be talked about. All right, my lovelies. Makeup is done. For the lips, forgot to press record. I have on the Dominique Cosmetics Lip Liner in Nudie. I do own a Pat McGrath lip liner, just the shade that I own. I kinda wanted something different, so that's why I went with this. And I did put on a gloss for Pat McGrath. This is in Dare to Bear. Every time I try to link this, they don't have this shade anymore. At least not on Sephora. Pat McGrath website, Possibly, maybe, um, but they have another one that's like a peachy golden kind of tone that's very similar to this. Here is the makeup. I think everything looks so pretty. My base looks great. Let me look at the under eyes. Um, I didn't mention, but the Pamagrath concealer, I did not fall in love with it the way that everybody else fell in love with it. It was a tiny bit too heavy, a tiny bit too dry for my under eyes, but it actually is looking pretty good right now. You saw how much I applied. As long as I don't overdo it, I feel I can make it work pretty well for my under eyes. And the powder is actually doing what it's supposed to do. Like I feel like my under eyes look really good. Maybe my under eyes like that powder now. <laughs> That's going to be it for this video. I honestly really just wanted to hop on here, give my opinions about this new launch. I feel like I had a lot to say and I just want to know if you agree with some of the things I said, if you agree with everything or if you don't agree with anything. <laughs> I feel like Pat McGrath is such a talented celebrity makeup artist. I mean, we see her work at runway shows. We see her work on the red carpet. A lot of celebrities go to her to get her, their makeup done for, you know, red carpet events. And I feel like they go to her for a reason. I enjoy the makeup. I enjoy what I have from her brand. I just feel like she's not being spontaneous enough like she used to be. I feel like if you were to lay out every palette color story from, when Mothership One, or even before that started, until now, you can really see where she stopped being a little bit more adventurous with the color stories. Again, that's just my opinion. <laughs> and it's 100% perfectly okay if you don't agree with that. I hope someone from the Pat McGrath team sees this and maybe they'll listen. Crossy fingers. <laughs> and I can guarantee you that I will never ever make the Pat McGrath PR list. <laughs>
which is perfectly okay. <laughs> All right, my lovelies. Well, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. You have no idea. All the comments, all the likes. If you use my links to shop, it truly does mean the world to me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't a downer. I 100% do not mean for this video to be a bash on Pat McGrath or her brand. It's just me giving honest thoughts and opinions about the launches for the past year, year and a half. Uh, and hopefully they take into consideration some of these opinions, you know? Okay, well, my kids are making a ruckus outside my bedroom door, as I'm sure you can hear. So I need to go. Do not forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And also do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you all on the next video. Bye.